This is the Apple Watch Ultra 2, and in today's real day in life review, we're going to be trying out the new display and build quality, trying out all the new heart rate tracking features and workouts just like this, and tracking the battery life throughout the day to see if it's worth the $799 that it costs, because I think that's expensive, but for the right type of person, this is an amazing product. So then the question is, are you the right type of person for it? So excited about this video, and the day starts now. So I'm a daily user of the regular series lineup. So I'm switching from the series lineup to the ultra, which means right away, I'm gonna notice a few key things. First one is that the display is brighter. This year, the display is now 3000 nits at the maximum brightness. It also goes down to one nit at the minimum brightness. That's a pretty big update. We'll especially notice that improvement in like the real world when we're outside. Another difference is that it's a 49 millimeter face. So on my wrist, it looks pretty big in comparison to the series lineup. We're gonna get a coffee using Apple Pay and then go to Central Park to test out the new cycling features. Okay, pumpkin spice latte. This is my absolute favorite time of the year. I just tried to use Apple Pay on the Apple Watch Ultra and it didn't work, but they said that the payment stuff has been finicky here. So now the second mission of the day is to find a new place to try it to see if it's the location or if there's something going wrong with the setup. Thank you. Okay, it's 12.20 p.m. and the Apple Watch Ultra is at 71%. I'm coming from a Series 7 Apple Watch, and I think this is an important note to make because most people don't upgrade their watch every single year, but even the way that the software interacts is different this year. Like, the buttons open up different things. So, the side button opens up the control center, whereas on the Apple Watch Series lineup, you swipe up to open up the control center. Swiping up brings you to, like, the quick access like all the applications that you've had open. Which brings us to this new feature that they launched this year, which is this double tap to operate the watch. It's not out yet, they mentioned it. And this is another trend that we're seeing with tech companies where they often say coming later this year, even though they mention it at the product launch. I tried it out in my testing. It was really good, but that was limited testing. But I think it's gonna be a feature that becomes second nature with interacting with the product. Like once you start using it, I think it's hard to remember a time where it wasn't a feature. The last time I got a bike in one of these videos, I was teaching myself how to ride. This is now the second time I've been on a bike in a decade, so we will see how it goes. 1.16 p.m., there's like a massive parade going on in the city, so it took a while to get to Central Park, but just rented the city bike. The watch is at 67%, and I'm gonna start a cycling workout. So one of the biggest features of the Apple Watch Ultra is obviously fitness tracking. I think that Apple's in a unique position where they help you track a multitude of different workouts while also being like, a smartphone equivalent in a lot of ways. So I'm gonna scroll down here to outdoor cycle. Viewing metrics on the iPhone during cycling workouts, tap the workout timer on your iPhone's lock screen to see all of your metrics. You can use the action button to mark a segment. It will now track your zone, your elevation, your distance, and your cycling power. Definitely getting a little more comfortable on the bike. This is still not fully in my comfort zone. So automatically on the phone, it will show you the actual workout. And then also it auto turns on the fitness focus mode when it notices that there's a workout going on in the watch, which is an ecosystem feature. And I feel like that is one of the main perks of getting an Apple watch over another fitness tracker. A lot of other fitness trackers have similar features. When you have an iPhone, the integration just feels seamless in your everyday life. Another thing I'm noticing on this bike ride is that the 3000 nits display definitely feels a lot brighter which means that I can see what my workout looks like much more visibly on my wrist. Workout complete, that was about a mile. I think this is probably the perfect time in the video to mention that I stress fractured my leg, which is why we're biking and not running today. Because of that, this is a little bit of a lighter workout, but that was around 17-ish minutes on the bike. And so once you hit end workout on the wash, you can see your total distance, time, average speed, active calories, and your average heart rate. There's a new feature now because of the new S9 where you can precision track your phone. So if I click here, it will actually say searching for a signal and then show me exactly where it is. So we're 11 feet away, I start walking. Okay, so it says five feet and it's tapping my wrist with the Taptic engine. And then as I get closer here, three feet, two feet, 1.4 feet, and there we go. Located it right here. Remind me in an hour to check in on the battery life. Siri doesn't need to connect to the internet anymore to process requests like that. So in the past, if you wanted to do a reminder and then you didn't have internet, it would say Siri unavailable and it wouldn't be able to process the request. But with the new S9 chip in the watch, you can now ask Siri to do things regardless of if you have service. Obviously, if it's something that needs the internet, like what's the temperature or send a text message, it will still need the internet support. But for questions, it doesn't anymore. And I've noticed that already helping me countless times throughout the day. It's 1.40 p.m. 
and the watch is at 64%. So the battery life is amazing so far. It really hasn't lost that much percentage with everything that we're doing. So I figured out why the Apple Pay wasn't working before. In order to use Apple Pay on the Apple Watch, Ultra, or any Apple Watch, you need to set up a passcode, which makes sense from a security perspective. So once it was set up, it sent just a double click to pay. And it also has an express pay feature where if you just hold it close to a reader and you have this setting on, it will pay without you having to double click to activate it. So we're outside now, and by holding down the power button here, I can turn on compass backtracking. And what this will do is it will track the actual route that we walk. So as we're walking on this route, the Apple Watch Ultra is using the new precision GPS tracking and the GPS in general to mark where we're going. So when we end the uh, backtracking, if we go right here, we can either delete our steps or retrace the steps. So if we hit retrace, it will calculate exactly where we were. So this can help you if you think you're gonna get lost on a hike or if you're gonna park somewhere and then you want to go back and be able to find your car. As we're walking here, it will help me figure out where I was coming from. 3.53 p.m. The watch is at 51% battery life. We're at 8.00. I'm going to hit the action button to open up workout. And then I'm going to start a functional strength training workout. And here we go, it's gonna be monitoring the time, the calories, and my heart rate. We are the only people at the gym right now, it is completely dead. I don't know what other people are doing, but they're definitely not working out today. That's actually good, because it's gonna make the audio quality better for this video. But while we're here, I wanna talk about a feature that I actually use a lot while I'm working out, which is voice text. If someone texts me and I don't wanna completely stop a workout, but I need to respond to them quickly. And with the new S9 chip, text-to-speech is a lot better. So, for example, text Zach, let's film the Apple Watch Ultra versus Series 9 video. Perfectly transcribed, and the message sent. It's 4.54 p.m., the watch is at 45%. My next check-in with you guys will be right before bed to do some sleep tracking with the watch, and then three takeaways I think are the most important things to know about it, if you're considering buying it or you're just interested in it. It is 11.27 p.m., the watch is at 31%. I'm gonna go to bed right now and track my sleep. This is also an example where the fact that it goes down to one nit in brightness is really valuable because it's not illuminating up the entire room, but I'm still able to see everything on the display. Very stoked that the battery life lasts until 4, 18 p.m. The battery life on the Ultra 1 was excellent, on the Ultra 2 it's excellent as well. And that leads us to the first takeaway, which is that everything that made the Ultra 1 amazing is still here. And the new features like the brighter display and the new health tracking has made the product infinitely better. If you have an Ultra 1, I don't think it's worth upgrading. But if you're coming from never having an Apple Watch Ultra or never having an Apple Watch in general, I think that this product will really excite you. Which is takeaway number two. This is one of my favorite tech products that I've tested out the entire year. Everything it says it's going to do, it just does really, really well. And I kind of started out this day in the life not thinking that I would be the target demo for it because it's so big on my wrist and I love the series lineup, but it has really changed my mind. The bigger display, the increase in battery life, and the health tracking features for all the workouts that I do has made this my daily driver Apple Watch now, which I'm really excited about. Obviously it's expensive and so I think the next video should be comparing it to the Series 9 to see how that product fares, but I'm very excited about it. And the third takeaway that is worth knowing is that it's kind of the perfect balance between health features and ecosystem features because obviously there are products like the Garmin which are very fitness focused and they would do a better job in intensely tracking a lot of different activities accurately. But I think what the Apple Watch Ultra provides that that doesn't is a seamless integration with your iPhone, like for example, with the cycling or battery life. And it makes it a really, appealing product that I'm very excited about. If you want to see the iPhone that I was using it with, you can check out that day in life review right here or hang out with me in this next video. I'll see you in one of those and thank you for watching this one.